Okay, what if we have lone pairs on our central atom? So this brings up now we have two different types of geometry. We can talk about the geometry of the electron groups. We call that the electron geometry, just looking at the electron groups. Or we can look at the geometry of the molecule, and here we're looking at the atoms. So if there's no lone pairs, it's the same thing. It's only when there's lone pairs that it becomes a little different. Okay, so consider ammonia. So we have to look at the Lewis structure. We look at the Lewis structure. How many electron groups are on that nitrogen? One. How many electron groups? Four. Four. Electron. electron groups. So not lone pairs. There's one lone pair. But electron groups are lone pairs, single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, or single electrons. So the lone pair counts as one group. So four groups. Four groups make a tetrahedron, right? This is the electron geometry, the geometry based on the electron groups. For the molecular geometry, we're looking at just the atoms. The way I think of this is electrons are a lot smaller than an atom. If an atom was the size of a football field, if its diameter was 100 yards, the nucleus would be the size of a green pea on the 50-yard on the line. And then the electrons would be 2,000 times smaller than that, at least, in that empty space. Right? So you had two electrons. That's way smaller than an atom. So the way I think of this is I think about the balloons getting away from each other. The balloons are the electron groups. A lone pair of electrons is invisible. It's there, but it's invisible. So you make that shape in your mind, and then you make that one invisible. So the other, the other electron groups don't move because that, that electron group is there. The lone pair is there. It's pushing the others away, but you can't see it. So when we describe the shape of this, we just describe where the atoms are. This is called a trigonal pyramid because it's a pyramid with a triangle at its base. It's not a very steep pyramid, but there you have it. Did you take my tetrahedron? No, it's just hiding behind the trigonal by pyramid. OK, so I took the tetrahedron, and I just pulled off one of the little white balls on the end. This, this stick here is important, but it's very tiny and you can't see it, and so what's left is a trigonal pyramid. Are you okay with that? So think of the lone pair as an invisible balloon. So trigonal planars are when there's no lone pair or lone pair. Right. A trigonal planar will be flat, but a trigonal pyramid is not, and it's not flat because of that lone pair. Oh, and I probably, there was something else I was supposed to talk to. No, it's on this slide. This one, this one really. Okay, bond angles. For a perfect tetrahedron, we've got 109.5. The actual geometry of ammonia, this angle is 107. It's a little bit less. And that's because this lone pair takes up more space. Those electrons are really tiny, but they occupy a lot of space. So if, if we look at bonding electrons, they're going to occupy this space between the two nuclei, and they're going to be focused in here. If we have a lone pair on a nucleus, there's nothing reining it in on the other side, and so it, it tends to have more of this shape. So this is going to take up more space and re repel the atoms more, and so that squeezes them a little bit together. Any questions? Again, you, know that? you do not need to know that this is 107 for ammonia. You should be able to tell me that it's less than 109.5. So, looking at water. Lewis structure for water. So, it's very easy 
to get the, the shape of water incorrect. If you don't think about those lone pairs, you might say, well, it's linear, right? Two hydrogens on an oxygen, that should be linear. It's not because of the lone pairs. On this oxygen, how many groups of electrons? Four groups. Four groups make a tetrahedron. So here's our tetrahedron. But now we have lone pairs, two lone pairs. So you make those invisible, and this is what you have left. And this has the very creative name of bent. Like that? It's a little different than trigonal by pyramidal, right? This one's just bent. Got bent out of shape. The angle here you should be able to predict is less than 109.5 because these two lone pairs are shoving these even closer together than they did for ammonia. The actual angle for water is 104.5. Questions? <coughs> Um, so we should understand the relative repulsion of electron groups. Lone pair, lone pair has the greatest repulsion. Um, lone pair, bonding pair is in the middle, and two bonding pairs have the least repulsion. So the number of, bonding, of lone pairs affects the bond angles. Here's no lone pairs. We get this ideal tetrahedron. One lone pair, the atoms get squeezed a little together. And with two lone pairs, they get squeezed together even more. Any questions? OK, five electron groups with lone pairs. Draw the Lewis structure for sulfur tetrafluoride. OK, so we'll put the fluorines around. And um, fluorine has seven. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 6 is 34. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I need two more. I'm going to put it on the sulfur. Sulfur's a big girl. She can expand into um, more than 8 electrons. So sulfur is going to expand the octet. So now I look at the, the central atom, and there's five groups. Five groups make a trigonal bipyramid. Okay, this, uh, this shape right here, trigonal bipyramid. One of them's a lone pair. Because all the bond angles are not the same here, it matters where we put the lone pair. That's the octahedron. This is the trigonal bipyramid. So see, on the, between the white ones, the angle's 120. But between the white and the green, it's 90. So who takes up more space, a bonding pair or a lone pair? A lone pair. The lone pair needs to go where there's more room for it. So the lone pair is going to go over here in one of the equatorial positions. It's not going to go in an axial position. What would happen with balloons if you tried to do this is they would just spontaneously squish around until they made this shape. They're going to give more space to that one. Now, the name of this one is kind of cute. So if I take this electron off the, um, the atom off the equatorial position, what would you call that? It's called a seesaw. So, so. It may be silly, but at least it's descriptive. So the shape of this molecule, the molecular geometry is a seesaw. The electron geometry is trigonal by pyramid, but the, the shape of the molecule is a seesaw. Any questions? What if we have two lone pairs? So here's bromine trifluoride. We have five electron groups, two lone pairs. Well, the lone pairs have to go in the equatorial position where they have more space. So make those invisible, and what do we have left? So I'm going to take off one more of these, and we call that T-shaped. 
real creative. I dare you to come up with a better, better name for that. Okay, so that was. It's a little long, don't you think? <laughs> what are the bond angles here? Ninety. Ninety. Yeah. Okay, um, five electron groups, and three of those are lone pairs. So xenon difluoride. So we have two bonds and three lone pairs. Again, the lone pair is going in the equatorial position. So we pull off this third equatorial atom, and that's linear. So that would have a bond angle of 180. Six electron groups with lone pairs. So bromine pentafluoride. There's going to be a lone pair on the bromine and five bonding pairs. Total of six makes this uh, octahedron, right? So that's the uh, electron geometry is octahedral. Take off one. Because the bond angles are the same, it doesn't matter which one you take off. You just take off one to look at the molecular geometry, and we call this a square pyramid. So the base of the pyramid is a square, and then we've got triangular sides coming up. Any questions? On pause. Whoops. I paused that one. Yeah. They, can, they can come up with their own stuff. Um, what if we have uh, two lone pairs? So two lone pairs. Now it is important where we put the second lone pair. So the first lone pair was down here. The second lone pair wants to get away from the first lone pair. Have more, it'll have more space over here. So we take off the, um, the ball on the opposite side. And now that's a square, right? And it's flat. It's not a square pyramid. It's a square planar. So square planar geometry. And these bond angles would be what? 90 degrees. <coughs> okay, so here's a table from your book summarizing all of that information. Right? It's just a lot of stuff. Okay, summarizing Vesper theory. Geometry is determined by the number of electron groups. You get the number of electron groups by looking at the Lewis structure. What is a group? It's a lone pair, a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or a single electron. We, we think about the, the electron groups repelling each other, trying to spread out. And then the bond angles can vary because multiple bonds are bulkier than single bonds. Lone pairs are more repulsive than bonding pairs. Uh, 